Federal government donates 3 billion naira to Nasarawa state to mitigate flood effects. NDLEA arrests drug traffickers in nationwide sting operations. And Operation Delta Safe Bursts Crude Oil Theft Syndicate. Hello and welcome to the news desk at 3 on NTA News 24. We're live in Abuja. I am Dennis at Digunlui. The federal government is supporting victims of flooding across the country as the Nasarawa state government received 3 billion naira to mitigate impact of the disaster in the state. Governor Abdullahi Sule said the fund will be judiciously used to rehabilitate victims of flooding in the state. Aliu Tijani reports. As rains intensifies across the country, more communities are being ravaged by flooding, with houses destroyed and farmland washed away. Nasra is one of the states hit by the disaster this year, and federal government steps in to bring succor to victims. Three billion naira provided to support victims of flood in the state, and Governor Abdullah Isuli commends President Bola Tinibu for the intervention, assuring that the fund will be judiciously used. We want to make sure that we, as every cobble we spend out of this three billion is accounted for and it is related to flood. Also, the people of the state appreciate President Tinibu for approving the conversion of Dalato Arab Specialist Hospital Lafia as Federal University of Lafia Teaching Hospital. The gesture Governor Sule says excites people of the state. The first approval for the conversion actually came during the past administration, but as at that time, the approval was for the relocation of all the doctors, all the personnel and uh, facilities, you know, from uh, FMC Kefi uh, to come here, which was not exactly what we wanted. You know, so we kept delaying and kept writing and kept pleading. Other issues discussed at the state executive council meeting include Payment of pensioners for local government retired staff, which the state government says henceforth will be funded by local government authority in view of Supreme Court judgment that affirmed their autonomy. In Lafia, Aliu Tijani, NTA News. The Commander Joint Task Force Operation Delta Safe says no stone will be left unturned until criminals involved in oil theft are reduced to the barest minimum, if not stopped in the Niger Delta region of the country. The Commander Joint Task Force South-South Operation Delta Safe, Rear Admiral John Okeke, stated this at the task force headquarters in Bielsa State while parading two suspects who had been facilitating illegal oil theft in the region. Jan Kumer Ululu was there and files this report. The mandate of the Joint Task Force Operation Delta Safe is to protect oil and gas infrastructure and to prevent militancy, sea robbery, crude oil theft, and other forms of criminality within the joint operation area. Task Force Commander, where Admiral John Okeke says the troops of the Joint Task Force South-South Operation Delta Safe early on Tuesday morning upon credible intelligence stormed Portacot resident of the ring leader and one other suspect of a syndicate who specializes on pretty fake documents for stolen crude oil in the Operation Data Safe Joint Operation Area. The suspect has confessed to the procuring of fake web bills illegal, for illegal sales of crude oil and the version of stolen crude from pipelines. As Commander Joint Task Force South South Operation Data Safe, I've made it clear that no stone will be left unturned until criminal in the joint operation area is totally eradicated or reduced to various minima. Documents recovered from one of the suspects include fake stamps of some associations and webbies, forged identity card, proxy, fake receipt, and fake certificates. Uh, it has been since uh, 2011. I, I used to have my organ, 
from Kaduna State, but he's dead. It, it is not genuine. The commander says the suspects will subsequently face prosecution after necessary investigation. Earlier, the commander played host to some youth group who are committed to assisting the task force in the fight against oil theft within the Joint Task Force Operation Area. From Ibogide, headquarters of Operation Data Save, Yanukume Ulolo, NTA News. A businessman in Lagos has excreted his 68 wraps of cocaine following his arrest at the local wing of the Mutala Mohammed International Airport, Ikeja. Salwa Khalil Ibrahim reports that operatives of the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency also smashed a five-member ladies drug trafficking gang and arrested two others for online sale of drugs in Edo State. The 36-year-old Onicha-based businessman was arrested at the early hours of Thursday, 8 August 2024 at the old domestic terminal of the Lagos airport while attempting to board a flight to Abuja where he was scheduled to join another flight to Vietnam at the Inamdi Azikiwe International Airport. The suspect was under NDLEA surveillance following intelligence report. He was thereafter intercepted by NDLEA operatives who moved him into excretion observation where he spent the next 12 days excreting the cocaine pellet weighing 1.282 kilograms. The agency also arrested five cross-border female drug traffickers at the Seme border while on their way back to Lagos from Ghana. Leader of the syndicate, a 42-year-old, has been under NDLEA radar before being tracked and arrested on Wednesday, 21st August, along with other members of her gang. At the point of their arrest, a total of 14 packs of loud were recovered from hidden parts of their bodies. Similarly, operatives at the Tinkan Seaport in Lagos on Friday, 23rd August, intercepted two containers which came from Mundra Port in India. No fewer than 1,596 cartons of codeine based syrup containing 319,200 bottles of the opioid, what about 2 billion naira, were recovered from the containers during a joint examination with other port stakeholders. Two ladies were arrested by operatives in Benin City for online sales of illicit drugs. A 21-year-old was arrested with 30 cups of cookies and 17 slices of cake all laced with illicit substances, a raid operation at Ogada village of the state on Tuesday 20th August led to the arrest of a 50-year-old with quantities of cannabis. Drug raids were carried out in Kogi, Delta and Yobe state during the week under review. In Abuja, Salwa Khalil Ibrahim, NTA News. Chairman of the All Progressives Congress Professional Forum and former Governor of Bauchi State, Isa Yuguda, is confident that the present administration will revolutionize the education sector uh, for the better. He stated this in Abuja while playing host to a delegation of the Northeast staff of the University of Abuja. The delegation, led by Professors Musa Misamari Ashom and Bala Adamu Azari, thanked President Bola Tinubu for appointing Yuguda as pro-chancellor of the National Open University of Nigeria. So I need your heads, you know, your competences, good giving, you know, talent, you know, to advise me from time to time. The mission of President Bola Tinubu's administration towards providing high-quality education and driving the renewed hope agenda for rapid national developments has received a boost as APC grassroots mobilizer and chairman, governing council of the Federal College of Education, Technical Kiana Aminu Suleiman, restated the resolve of the Nasrallah State to champion innovative education. He stated this while on a visit to Nasrallah State Governor Abdullahi Sule in Lafia, where they interacted on mutual areas of cooperation especially in projecting the renewed hope agenda of President Tinubu through smart learning initiatives,
provision of skills acquisition opportunities and youth inclusiveness in governance. So I want to use the opportunity to commend the federal government for agreeing to cite this institution in Nasara State and indeed in Kiana. You have to understand that when you are taking off for a brand new institution, there will be several challenges. That's why I'm calling on all of the people of Kiana to give you maximum cooperation so you will succeed. So he was telling our province to come with our old document to make sure this will take over. The advocacy for local government's participation in critical decisions took center stage at the Emir of Lafayette's Palace, where rural economic emancipation was canvassed. So that all of us together we work to ensure that we also take advantage of that long time and the at the end, it was resolved that effective education remains key to ensuring sustainable growth. Meanwhile, Minister of State for Education, Dr. Yusuf Tanko Sununu, is calling for strict enforcement of the act establishing the Chartered Institutes of Project Managers in Nigeria to rid the profession of quacks and the attendant destruction of lives and property due to poorly constructed structures in the country. This came up at the close of this year's Project Management Week, organized by the Chartered Institute of Project Managers in Nigeria. Topway Alabi reports. The Minister of State for Education, Dr. Yusuf Tanko Sununu, who is a recipient of an honorary fellowship of the Chartered Institute of Project Managers in Nigeria, called for urgent enforcement of penalties stipulated in the Act establishing the Institute, stressing the need to sanitize project implementation in the country to prevent quackery. Dr. Sununu assured the Institute's leadership of the Ministry's support to achieve its objectives. Nature does not accept vacuum. It's either you protect yourself or you lose your relevance. And Quack will have a field day, field day to play. I would therefore want you to ensure that all the provisions of the Act are strictly adhered to. You will earn your respect and you will earn your members a job. President of the Institute, Dr. Jamilu Issa Yankwanshi, highlighted the need for the public to deal with the authentic institute to avoid misrepresentation. Anybody who signed any certificate under this logo is not an official of the Chartered Institute of Project Managers of Nigeria. Such kind of certificate cannot be used for admission. It cannot be used for professional practice. The event which has participants from the National Universities Commission, NUC, who have completed their training, featured induction of new members and the unveiling of the Institute's official logo, while the President, Dr. Yang Kwanshi, announced Governing Council's dissolution of College of Fellows and establishment of Body of Fellows, following the induction of five new fellows and five chartered members of the institute. We are trying to ensure that Nigerians have the opportunity to be duly licensed and practice the project management profession so that you are not found liable. In Abuja, Tokbe Alabi, NTA News. The Minister of State Youth Development, Sayodele Olawande, has said the federal government will continue to engage young Nigerians as part of the quest to drive the renewed hope agenda of President Bola Tinubu which identifies them as a driving force. He disclosed this at the Boys Brigade 62nd Council meeting in Abuja. He said the extensive consultation approach the federal government has adopted in addressing some of their challenges shows they will continue to feel the touch of good governance. There you can see that we unveiled that we want to have a youth dialogue with all the youth from all the 774 local governments. Even if it is your language, and it is not by us, we are partnering with all a lot of youth organizations. And this is the first government that you will see a young people from the age of 30 years, 30, 35, 40, 41, that they are members of a cabinet of a decision making. We want these kind of things to return to schools, to return to various organizations that building youth is very, very important for us today. The things that is for the youth, the youth must get involved. In terms of lawmaking, in terms of implementation of the laws, and in terms of mobilizations. 
Sincerely, the future of every country lies on the youth. But eventually, this government, there is a significant improvement in youth inclusiveness in governance. National President of the Boys Brigade, Professor Samson Duna, called for increased funding to support the organization's development initiatives. He said the brigade has the capacity to empower young people and drive positive change nationwide, pinpointing character formation, skills development, and community service as its major objectives. So the boy, what we do in the Boys Brigade, basically, number one, we render services. We train the boys, we do parade, we do sports, we do obstacle, we do, uh, we even control traffic. We, held, we, we even render uh, medical treatment. You're watching the News Desk at 3 on NTA News 24. We'll have a short break. More reports in a moment. From the creeks of the Niger Delta, To the breathtaking scenery of the plateau. In noonday and nighttime, we set out to bring to you captivating stories that evoke your emotions. For fascinating documentaries and reports on day to day issues with expert analysis, tune in to NTA News 24, DSTV Channel 419, Go TV Channel 26. Star Times, Channel 101 and 433, and Free TV, Channel 703. You're welcome back. Ogun State Governor Dakpo Abiodun has flagged off the construction of the 70 kilometer Abelguta Ifota Lagos Expressway with a pledge that the project will be completed in the next 18 months. The governor who performed the flag off notes that the road is significant to Ogun, Lagos, and Nigeria at large. Hakim Jimo reports. This flag was unveiled in commemoration of the short journey, the construction of the Zongo Water, Water Expressway. Governor Dako Abiodun who appreciates President Bola Ahmed Tinubu for obliging the request of Ogun State Government for the reconstruction of the expressway underscores the importance of the road, assuring that it will create jobs for both skilled and unskilled workers through direct and indirect employment. We continue to prioritize roads leading to farm settlements, to rural areas, to townships and border communities. So we can continue to facilitate the movement of people, goods and services along our industrial hubs. I also pledge, I also pledge to continue completing any inherited project. Stakeholders note that with the project, soccer is gradually coming the way of road users. We want to, we need to also consider Papa for a bridge. Papa deserves a kind of interchange that Scrapeboard introduced as a pair. And a silent achiever. Excellency, not only in the jury or the color that we are directed, but across five local governments. The road, which has been in deplorable condition for years, is expected to be completed within the next 18 months. From Itori in Ogun State, Akim Jimo, NTA News. Forty years ago, a group of young men gathered at the Nigeria Military School, eager to serve their country and make a difference. Today, they are reunited, reflecting on their journey and exploring ways to leverage Nigeria's diversity for a better future. Ibrahim Dan Hamidou takes us to 1984, 32nd Passing Out Platoon Program, 40th Anniversary and Reunion Seminar in Abuja, where old friends reconnected and new in my ideas emerged. This reunion is a chance to relive cherished memories and reconnect with old comrades. It is also an opportunity to discuss the pressing challenges facing Nigeria and explore innovative solutions. The seminar's theme, Leveraging Nigeria's Diversity for Inclusive Nation Building, 
underscores the importance of embracing the country's rich diversity to achieve stability and prosperity. We believe in the unity of this country. Nation building and diversity particularly is of interest to us. We need this land as Nigerians. In his keynote speech, His Royal Highness Ahmed Nuhu Bamali, the Emir of Zezo represented, emphasized the vital role traditional institutions play in promoting unity and stability. Our diversity is our source of strength. Some members of the Alumni Association expressed their commitment to giving back to their alma mater and contributing to nation building by leveraging their network and expertise. So that really strong strengthened our mind in terms of um, our resolve as Nigerians. We did a lot of things that uh, uh, contributed in our development as men. The Bravo Company really shaped me in the way I've uh, turned out today. And in doing that, we need to be honest. During the dinner reception, Mrs. Lillian Adebola a renowned life coach, legacy and leadership expert, delivered a lecture on how to live a fulfilling life after retirement. She stressed the importance of finding purpose and meaning in life, as well as giving back to society. You see, we're talking about legacy here, right? Sitting in this room is a wealth of wisdom. In Abuja, Ibrahim Nanghamidu, NTA News. As Nigeria joins the rest of the world to mark this year's World Humanitarian Day, an Adamawa-based non-governmental organization is emphasizing the importance of protecting the environment and supporting humanitarian efforts. This is as it launched the Action Against Climate Change campaign to plant at least 1,000 trees to combat the devastating effects of climate change in the state, having planted over 50,000 trees from January to August with another 50,000 expected to be planted before the end of the year. The President's Imnamu Foundation, Dr. Emmanuel Musa, at an event held at Makui IDP Center in Yola, handed 200 operational vehicles to humanitarian organizations as part of steps to address logistics challenges. There was a disbursement of 500 million naira grant to support over 500 entrepreneurs, particularly women and youths, to grow their businesses amid current economic challenges geared towards reducing poverty, promoting equality, and a more inclusive society. Imana Foundation, he has demonstrated that there is a need to support humanity and to collaborate in order to bring relief to the needy. It gives me a great joy to see the foundation of such a Emmanuel Foundation delivering much needed assistance. Our goal is to reduce poverty and promote equality, working towards a more inclusive society. Meanwhile, a total of 200 bags of rice was given to the IDV camp in Yola as people living with disabilities received cash donations to address their pressing needs. The event, attended by dignitaries from the Federal Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs, the Economic Community of West African States and other organizations, noted the importance of protecting humanitarian workers and the communities they serve. The Emir of Ilori Ibrahim Sulugambari has rejoiced with the Sultan of Sokoto and President General, Nigeria Supreme Council for Islamic Affairs, Mohamed Saad Abubakar, on his 68th birthday. Al-Haji Sulugambari described the Sultan as a paragon of peaceful coexistence, bringing humanity across all tribes, religions and social status. Together in Nigeria, stressing that Sultan Sa'ad Abubakar is no doubt a detribalized Nigerian. This is contained in a congratulatory message issued by the Emir spokesman Abdulaziz Arwana. He commends the Sultan for championing peace and conciliating conciliation programs across the country and beyond as a traditional ruler and father to all. The Emir wants family members, the Sokoto Emirates, the government and people of Sokoto State, friends and well wishes to continue to support Sultan Mohammed Sahad Abu Bakr with prayers for Almighty Allah to continue to strengthen and grant him more years of health and happiness on earth. 
And while the Emir of Ningi, Yunusa Muhammadu Danyaya, has died at the early hours of, hours of Sunday at a hospital in Kano, where he was receiving medical treatments and under observation for age-related ailments. Aged 88, the late Reverend Emir of Ningi ruled for 46 years, making him the current longest-serving Emir in the North. In this report, Mazu Hassan takes a look at the life and times of the late Emir. Late Emir of Ningi Yunusa Muhammad Nanyaya rules the Emirate for 46 years. Installed in 1978, the Emir has become the longest reigning Emir in the history of Ningi Emirates. Born in 1936, Yunusa Nanyaya had an illustrious working career before ascending the throne of his four beers. He attended the Ningi Elementary School between 1941 and 1946, then Bauchi Middle School from 1946 to 1951 before proceeding to the School of Hygiene Kano the same year and later to the Ahmadu Bello University Zaria and earned a diploma in public administration. His working records during the native authority period started as a dispenser at Nasuri Dispensary Ningi. He was a member of the Ningi Emirate Council from 1956 to 1960, Councillor for Medical and Health Department from 1956 to 1959, and member of Ningi Native Authority Outer Council between 1954 and 1956. Let Emir Denyaya was Taban District Head and Churoma Ningi as the beginning of his voyage in royalty. In 1963, Let Yunusa Enyaya joined Nigerian Tobacco Company Zaria as a welfare officer serving until 1967. In 1968, he became an assistant marketing officer who was later made assistant manager in charge of Gusau and Kaurana Moda in 1968 under the Northern Nigeria Marketing Board. Died in the early hours of Sunday in Kano where he was receiving medical attention for age-related health issues. The first-class traditional ruler had spent 46 years on the throne after he ascended it in 1978. In Bauchi, Mwas Hassan, NTA News. And President Bola Tinubu commiserates with the people of Ningi Emirates and the Bauchi state government over the passing of the Emir of Ningi, Haji Yunusa Mohamed Nangaya. The first class monarch passed away in the early hours of Sunday, as uh, we heard in that report. And uh, the president describes the deceased as an illustrious leader who deployed the power of his resources of his throne in the services of the community. The president prays for the repose of the soul of the departed traditional ruler and condoles with his family and all those grieving the loss. And that concludes the news desk at 3 on NTA News 24. Thanks for watching. I am Dennis at Digging Louis.